I do want to thank everybody for joining today. Um, this will be exciting. Um, I love when we have Deborah on. Um, she's been doing mindset coaching for, uh, well, I'll let her introduce herself, but um, a few decades. Uh, she has been my personal business coach for a couple of years. She's really helped me, um, I guess, explode my business um, over the past really like year and a half. Um, we've just been growing like crazy over here and um, I like to attribute a lot of that to some of the uh, uh, mindset hacks that Deborah's provided me, a lot of the business coaching that Deborah's provided me. Um, she helps keep keep me on track and it's um, it's not your typical business coaching. It's um, a little deeper than that. Um, it's It's definitely with a mindset focus. Um, but there is a lot of uh, business background in there. Um, she does, uh, let me make sure she's not popping back in here. Um, she works primarily with, uh, she works a lot in the mortgage industry. Um, real estate agents, definitely a lot in the mortgage in industry. Um, I'd say um, that's been probably one of her her bigger focuses there. So for us as a company, she she's a great fit for helping me get through um, some of the sticking points in my business because we do do real estate and mortgage here. So she uh, can definitely relate to a lot of the challenges and growing pains and things like that that we go through as a company and kind of help us uh, push through on that, um, on those items. So um, with that, um, Deborah, do you want to, you were off, but I was just, talking about you a little bit, I figured I'd let you introduce yourself and your experience and background and things like that, because you're obviously better at it than I am. But uh... Oh, no, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just had to click off for a second and um, let someone into the webinar. She was having trouble. So definitely, I appreciate that kind introduction, Travis. Thank you so much. And it's a pleasure to come back on with you and do this webinar um, for 2023. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's been a lifetime really of being involved in the real estate and mortgage industry as a coach. Um, probably since 1999, I gave a speech at a mortgage broker conference and it was it was a keynote and there was a couple thousand people in the room and my phone kind of blew up. <laughs> so it became a niche market. And then I just found myself digging deeper and deeper into the industry as a whole. You know, I, I think oftentimes people in real estate see themselves as separate from mortgage but you know I, i've really come to realize that it's it's one big pool and it's just different nuances of the same of the same industry so it's been brilliant i've probably coached most of the ceos in the in the um wholesale lending area and uh done some programs for keller williams at their at their austin texas office and you know it's it's been great so interesting for me to um to uh not have ever done alone um but to be so involved in so deeply in an industry it's kind of cool yeah so and I, I know as a business owner in this you know space i definitely appreciate some of the uh the insights you've given and and you know growing a company and things like that so it's definitely helped me you know like I said, push through just a lot of the challenges of growing a business. I mean, it, it can be applied in many different businesses, but your background, you know, working with the wholesale lenders and in the mortgage industry has definitely helped with uh, some of those growing pains. And so that I've been appreciative of. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Should we get started? I say we go ahead and get started. We do it. All right. So let um, me do a... Let me just tell everybody the chat is open. So yeah. if you have questions, you can throw them in the chat. Uh, we'll try and answer them as we go. Um, usually, Deborah takes breaks as she goes for questions if you have any. Yeah. Um, but sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 100%. All right, let me get my screen sharing going here. I have created a whopper of a message for everybody today. Um, you know, it's, as we know, it's a brand new year. So, this is an opportunity to really dial in your goals, your dreams, your ideas, and turn them into physical form. And so today you will learn that you have complete creative control over 
your reality, over your circumstances, over your life, over your business. Because what's happening in the world is not new. I mean, we've been through hard times before, and there's certainly been recessions before. The question is, um, who thrived and who didn't? And in many cases, it was really boiled down to how people ran their mind and how they they managed their energy as to what it was that they that they put forward into the world and how they fared through a downturn in the market. So, you know, it's my um, background is in neuroscience and business strategy, and um, I've come to learn that there really is no strategy until you line yourself up with what it is that you're creating. So there's, there's just no room to struggle. There's just no room for grinding. It's just, it's an old archaic uh, paradigm. And so I thought the best way to, to get this forward today is to encourage you to think bigger, to think beyond your, your current circumstances, to think beyond the current results that you're getting and actually expand. See, most people contract, you know, most people pull back and get scared and hunker down and, and nothing could be worse because you have to push through the energy. It's like fog on a, on a highway. If you stop in the middle of the fog, you're going to get rear ended. And it's the same with your goals and your objectives for this new year. So Let's dive in, shall we, and see what I've got in store for you guys today. And I have a gift at the end. I'm going to give you one of my video trainings on how to manage your energy, and you'll see why it's absolutely crucial for you to have that tool to, as we go through this presentation today, this webinar, for you to actually create the life you want to create for yourself in 2023. What are we waiting for, right? What are we waiting for? All right, so I have to see how my how my toggles work here because it's not cooperating. There we go. So what makes 2023 different? Really, think about that. And I'm curious, like put that in the chat. What makes 2023 different? I'd be curious to know what what you think that is. And um I don't think, Travis, that I can manage the chat. Are you able to do that? Oh, here we go. Yep, I can um, manage chat. All right, so we've got a couple. I saw that Paul had his hand up earlier. Um, it was Jose. Okay, I am older and wiser. Pam made it on. So welcome. I should have said that earlier. Welcome to everyone. And I wonder, you know, if Pam makes the uh, gets the award for being the one furthest away. She's in Anguilla, which oh, wow. is, uh, yeah, you know, not far from St. Martin. Um, so thank you for joining. And um, we got you all hooked up there. I think you'll have less agents. Absolutely. That's absolutely true. I remember, and I, I, I wonder if you guys remember this in 2008 when the crash, the big financial crash happened. At that point, it really cleaned house in terms of agents. You know, I was talking to an agent the other day about this and she was worried because her office is, is letting people go. And, and I said, well, honey, that just leaves more money on the table for you. Because what happened in 2008 is there was actually more agents, more real estate agents per capita in the state of California than there was anywhere in the entire country. And it flushed out all the people that really weren't running that um, as, a, as a committed business. They were just doing a loan here or there. I think the statistics showed that the average loan amount was, or the average uh, turn income was like five grand per agent. So they were just like, they weren't serious. You know, it was something to do. It was a side hustle basically. But really, um, I'll tell you what, what is, makes 2023 different is nothing. Nothing makes 2023 any different unless it's you. You know, you have to be different. We are 
programmed in society to look at our lives as being influenced and controlled by external circumstances. And to a point that's true from a logical linear mind perspective, the thing is, is you don't have to buy into that. If you do buy into that, then you will be constantly on the hook, so to speak, led around by the changing circumstances that are outside of you, that are outside of your control. So yes, that does become a very true experience. My point is, is it doesn't have to be. When you develop your power, and I'm gonna teach you how to do that today. When you develop your power, then circumstances don't apply to you. And this is true, it's been true all through history. If you look at some of the statistics during downturns in the economy, let's take the Great Depression of the 30s, for example. There is uh, statistics that show that companies that didn't contract and hide and hunker down actually owned the market. Sears Roebuck at the time um, did not back off of their marketing. They saw that their competitors were disappearing out of the marketplace. And so Sears actually came in and they took over that money that was left on the table. They took over that market share. I used to be in advertising. I spent six years in the radio industry and I had the uh, task of doing multimedia buys. Bef uh, this was pre-internet, doing multimedia buys across the country for, for companies and helping them balance their budget between print and radio and television. And I can promise you that it all comes down to repetition as you're gonna see as we go through this webinar today. So the thing you have to realize is that you are your only shot at success. It's nothing outside of you. It's not the market, it's not the rates, it's not the company you work for, it's you. And really, truly, it's about being committed and dedicated to what it is that you're creating and ignoring the rest. You have to be willing to shut off your sensory acuity, which is gonna be triggered what you hear, what you see, what you smell, what you taste, what you intuit, what you feel, your emotions. If you aren't skilled at shutting that off, then yeah, you are definitely gonna be drug around and you're going to be a victim of whatever's going on in the world. And we certainly don't want that. So to realize, you know, I say to my clients, like there ain't nobody coming to save you. It's time for you to actually be accountable to how your thoughts run because those create your emotions and those emotions create your vibration and it's your vibration that attracts your experiences to you. So you can bypass all of the external circumstances just like Sears Roebuck did and you can make wiser, smarter decisions and you can actually create different results for yourself by rising above the fray. Do you know what I'm saying? Like just getting above the fray. And you know, to Travis's point, I like to phrase it as we will have an abundance of agents who take their businesses seriously. Absolutely. So talking about talking out loud about what you're creating. And I'm going to give you some tools for that. So the starts with a it starts with a decision. You know, do you want a different life? Some people don't because it, it takes work. Do you want a better life? Some people don't because they, they don't wanna be responsible for themselves because they've bought into a societal program, a status quo program that you're a victim and things happen to you and you need someone external to you, a government, um, some sort of agency, God to save you. And it's, well, you know, God helps those who help themselves. And, you know, a government agency is not there to help you. It's, it's there to take advantage of your situation. So you really is your only chance and your only shot at success is you and how you run your mind because that's what runs your emotions. So putting out to the, to the world, to 
your inner being to your unconscious mind to the universe to God. This is what I'm creating. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for guiding me. Thank you for showing me the steps and opening the doors. Thank you, God, for increasing my territory is really the conversation you need to have with yourself. So make today the day that you begin the journey to becoming the person that you want to be. And let it, all the rest of that go. It's really, really important that you become incredibly selective and circumspect in terms of the conversations you have, in terms of the people that you engage with, in terms of what you consume all the way across the board. Thoughts are consumption, not just food. Emotions are consumption, not just beverages. Messaging online, social media, wherever you're hanging out, whatever news sta station you're watching, this is all consumption. And, you know, to quote Marianne Williamson, you cannot afford the luxury of a single negative thought. You just can't. And so when you make this decision now, then you become very selective about who's in your life, including messages. So I just want to see, type in the chat, send me a message as to your commitment to begin the journey today to become the person that you want to be. So I'm just going to, I'm going to pause here. So I want to see how many people are really listening. Are you multitasking? Are you on multiple devices? Are you, what are you doing right now? Are you engaged? Let's just see what we get, Travis, because this is where the rubber meets the road. Without this decision, it's really not going to matter. Uh, I'm going to throw something in the chat. So, What's that? I'm so engaged, I'm so I'm going to throw something in the chat as well. So, Yeah, please do. Um, Mark says, I'm not getting sound. Well, we better fix that. Helen's engaged. Awesome. Sorry about the siren. I have my windows open. Okay. It is some fresh air. Um, Paul, yeah, definitely. Uh, Jose, I'm in agreement with you. I'm open to learn. Awesome. Augustina, great name. I'm focused to grow. Really good. Keep them coming. Let's see what we else what else we have. Pam, I'm fully committed to begin this exciting adventure and experience the bigger 2023. And I'm ready to expand. Um, Anaheed here, ready to grow. Welcome. Um, Alicia, I was multitasking. Okay, you're busted. <laughs> but stopping and being fully engaged. Thank you. Really? Thank you for being honest. At least she was honest, right? Yeah. Yes, she was. <laughs> I've got to give you an A for honesty. <clears throat> I'm engaged in my transformation that I started. I love it. That's so cool. Well done, you guys. I know. I, I tell you, I spent um, a significant amount of time over the holidays repatterning myself. I do that every year. You know, I think a lot of people might be out partying, which is cool. I have, I have some fun, I'm not all dull and boring, but um, Susan says, would like to learn more. And Josh is, I'm ready to expand in life instead of treading water. Yes, thank you. Um, so I kind of dialed back my social engagements this year and I did some really deep reprogramming on myself. I can't wait to teach this to you because I walked the Monday after New Year's, um, I walked into that day and I did a full work day. I couldn't stop myself. It's not that I, I forced myself. I just was so thrilled at what I, the work I've done on myself and the doors that it's opening that I couldn't wait to get started. And that's how I want all of you guys to feel. I want you to bounce out of bed in the morning ready. Like, I can't wait to get after this. So in my system, I don't teach you what to think. I teach you how to think. Because the how is the mechanics, the what is the content. So when you learn the mechanics of thinking, then you can change any direction that you're headed in life. And it's so much more powerful than fighting yourself with affirmations, with um, 
you know, trying to make yourself do things. I approach this as, you know, the smallest change for the biggest result. And I think when you can understand how to think, then you can shift anything, really, including the content, including the strength of your affirmations, because you're still going to do affirmations, but you're not going to do them from a place of begging for change. You're going to do it from a place of knowingness. So see, there's, there's, there's hope, there's belief, and there's knowing. When you know that you've got it, when it's, you know that what you're asking for, what you're seeking is seeking you, by the way. When you know that what you're seeking is a done deal, and I'm talking about the energy, you may not see it in physical form yet. And this is where a lot of people get caught up. It's like, but it's not here. It's not here. And they keep looking at it not being here. But in actuality, energetically, it's already alive in you. So this is, I want you to write this down. Because this is the key right here. Living each day as if it's already done. And letting go of the, where is it? I don't see it yet. When is it going to happen? Every time you talk like that, you throw up a block, like one of those big cement, you know, dividers in the middle of the highway. You throw one of those up on your path. You can't think like that anymore. That's the mechanics, you see. The discipline comes from only focusing on what it is that you desire. And when the doubt creeps in, doing a pattern interrupt so that you interrupt yourself from that old archaic thinking system, which is prevalent everywhere in society. Your thoughts will either make you or break you. And so that's what's different about my system for 2023 for you, is that you actually realize that it's nothing outside of you holding you back. I can't stress that enough. It's not your spouse. It's not the market. It's not your business partner. It's not the rates. It's not whatever story you tell yourself. That's a story. And if you keep repeating that story, you are powerless, meaning you're a victim and you have zero control over your circumstances. But when you align with your inner being, when you align with your higher self, your personal power, I mean, there's so many ways I can say that, right? But you understand what I'm talking to you about. It is about dialing in and letting go of the reference to the past. Stop talking about the past, please. Don't talk about it anymore. The only time you can actually reference the past is when you're looking at what worked that made you great. Because then you can model that. You can look at the, a time in history when you were just like on fire and things were clicking. What was going on inside of you? Not what was going on in the market, but what was going on between you and you and model that. That's the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter who yet around you. It just matters what was going on in here. The thing is, is that and, you know, I see, I see this a lot. Maybe I should just pause here for a second. So who can recall a time that they were really popping, really like cruising, things are clicking? Tell me about one of those times. Just give me a snippet. Helen says, I love that this is all part of my current belief system. I'm so happy to hear this today for the encouragement that it gives me. I'm super excited. Right. This is, a, this is a, a woman that's been working on herself and has been actually training her belief system the way she wants it instead of the way somebody else taught it to her back in the day, whenever that was. Or maybe a hardship in life convinced her that she was not going to make it or whatever that story is that you bought into. The thing is, is you can't look back anymore. You have to look forward unless it's sharpening the saw 
on this new way of thinking, this new approach. So what do we have here? Any new chats, uh, messages for us, Travis? I don't um, see any new ones, but I can reflect on one real quick. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually when um, I attended your first three-day workshop. Mm. Um, you know, I was really busy. I was really bogged down is what I was. I remember that. You know, we were growing and, you know, I had a lot going on, but my work day was just insane. My phone just would not stop, which was good, but there was also some of that was negative that was coming through on the phone as well. And so, you know, after the workshop, um, which I almost didn't come to because I was making an excuse in my head that, I, that I couldn't make it, but I made it happen. And I was really glad that I did. Um, I mean, for probably two months afterwards, I really did a lot of restructuring and I was so excited every day to be doing what I was doing. Um, I mean, I was probably sleeping maybe five hours a day, right. um, but I wasn't tired because I was so excited about what I had going on and restructuring and um, how that was making me go even faster with the business. Um, so it was a really cool time. I mean, I almost felt like I was vibrating. I was like so excited. Well, you day. were, I know. And then just like talking about my business to people and, and things like that. So um, yeah, you made was, a dramatic shift. Yeah, yeah, you made a dramatic shift. And I remember for you guys watching, that was the three-day business accelerator boot camp that I do a couple times a year. That that was the first one you came to, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then and then you came to a couple of leadership and management one day retreats, I think, too. Yep. Yeah. And Josh came to one. And did did we get Alicia there? I don't think we got Alicia there yet. Um, yeah, Alicia came to one. She did. She did. Board. Yep. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So um it we as people fail on the front of acknowledging ourselves, I think. And I mean, I have to remind myself to do the same thing, you know, to a gratitude list is brilliant for that, where you can, but the problem with gratitude list is we're kind of thankful for stuff that is, is more of a, like, whew, I'm not there anymore. You know, thank God I have this because I no longer suffer we really want to get into a place of appreciation because the appreciation is on the greatness of you, the greatness of you. Each one of you are great. And focusing on the greatness of you <clears throat> is really the key. So I do that with myself. I'm like, when I lie in bed at night, the last thing I focus on is what I'm creating. And just before that, I run through my day and this is a tool. I hope you guys are writing this down. I run through my day and I tell myself what a great job I did. You know, I did this. I got that out the door. I had this conversation. I closed that deal. I launched new, new opportunities for people to engage with me, whatever it is. I went for my workout. I drank my water. I got out in the sun. I had a walk. I masterminded with God. You know, I always pat myself on the back for uh, my, my day well done. And if it went poorly, I reframe it in my mind. I find the blessing and I say, yeah, okay, this didn't really go the way I wanted to, but the blessing is blah, blah, blah. So that's a really good tool for you guys. Creative thinking and firm belief that you can execute on ideas. This is something that I've been teaching for a long time. And, and I took it to another level over the holidays when I was working on myself. And, and that is to literally cultivate deeper belief in yourself. And some of us have been through experiences in life, maybe in our childhood, where we were told we weren't good enough, where we told we, we would never make anything of our lives or that life is hard. Like, I don't know what you were programmed to believe about yourself. I know for me, I was taught I was worthless in a variety of ways. I'm not going to dig into that because we don't want to create that energy again. But that's what I was taught. 
And that's what I saw around me that, you know, our family could only go so high. And I had to, I had to, I had to repattern that and, and get that out of my psyche. And so creative thinking is the answer to your business. A lot of people don't realize that business is a creative process. Most people think of creativity as, you know, the arts, you know, whether it's performing arts or sculpture or painting, writing music, whatever, but it's really business is super creative because it makes you dig deep into your soul to find out what it is you really want to experience. And I tell you that when you believe that you can execute on those ideas, it's like, you know, the universe knocks itself out, your unconscious mind, you have to, you have to really learn how your subconscious works. I call it unconscious universe consciousness. I have a plethora of names for it. When you learn that you become unstoppable. And I'm so happy to be able to share this with you today so that you can run forward into your life and create your future the way you want it to be. What happens once you create this new pattern in you to Travis's point is you have all this inspired action that like pulls you forward and, and encourages you. And it's calling you like, can you, can you guys hear the birds outside my window? Whenever I get passionate on the phone or on a webinar or on a training, the birds just like land on my deck and they go crazy. They must like my energy. So the inspired action part is the huge part. You know, it's not grinding, not, not pushing, not striving, but you're pulled forward. Your goal pulls you forward. Your alignment with yourself, you know, you between you pulls you forward. And then, yeah, you're going to work, but you're going to love it because you're inspired to do it, not because you're making yourself do it. And, you know, struggle is just when we have negative emotion on an idea. That creates struggle because then we have to force ourselves. Whereas if we had positive emotion on that idea, we'd be inspired to do it, right? That's the mechanics of how to think. Your hands are merely the helpers to your mind. 90% of the population thinks their efforts and their hard work is the answer. And that's why most people suffer and are in poverty because it has nothing to do with hard work. I can promise you that. That I can promise you. You must become wealthy in spirit to become wealthy in fact. If you're doubting, if you if you're if you're like every chance you get buying the cheap stuff because it's a habit even when you have the resources to get the better stuff you're constantly telling and programming yourself that you're not good enough you're not enough you don't deserve this you're going to have to like always have the the cheapest version cuz you have to save the money for a rainy day because you're in scarcity, it's a scarcity mindset, then there's no trust and there's no faith and there's no belief. And there certainly isn't any knowing that is completely off the table, right? So it's about cultivating a new you. Your belief is the key, your belief in the unseen. A lot of people need to see it to believe it. And those are the people that have to work hard. Those are the people that grind. Those are the people that are risk adverse and they never step forward in their lives. Did you know that there's a statistic that says that 60% of your potential is left on the table for most people in their lifetime? Most people in their lifetime only ever tap into and actualize 40% of their greatness. So they only know 40% of their possibilities. So that's where it all stops and starts. It's nothing outside. It's all an inner, it's all an inner game. You see your, 
image of yourself, your self-image gets projected out there through your thoughts, emotions, vibration, and is mirrored back to you in real life experiences, like this little kitty cat, you know? This little kitty cat has a good self-image. Look what big lion is staring back. So what are you projecting? Maybe we could just take a pause here. So I, I want to have more of an interaction instead of talking at you. Certainly don't want to lecture you. And I get, I get very passionate about this because I crack the code on success and I want the world to have these tools. So I'm going to just like breathe and pause for a moment. And I would like, I would like you to comment what you believe your self-image to be being and to be. And I want you to be honest, you know, if you have one that's not really up to speed with your goals, be honest. It's okay. You have to start with where you're at. You can't leapfrog past this point. This is everything. I really think that that's an important part about this exercise too, is being honest with yourself. Um, Cause I, I think that a lot of people really aren't. And that's, that's been a tough lesson for me through the years is really being honest of why I'm in the position I am, whether it was good or bad, really. Yes. So, um, yeah. Well, we're not trained. Take... We're not trained our way to, to see that, you know, if you consider, uh, the programming and the, and the, and the, and the con conditioning we get from childhood on. I think rare is the uh, parent or teacher or coach. I mean, when they're really good, then yeah, but most aren't. Most people come to the table in a position of leadership, whether they're a parent, a coach, a teacher, whatever, with their own limiting beliefs. Yeah. And their own negative emotions about themselves. So how could you learn anything different other than who they're being? I agree. Right. Yeah. Austin put one in. I have a self image that I am royalty, and each individual I come across is as well. Nobody is higher or lower than the next. Exactly. Exactly. So, what I would say to that, because that's really good, Austin, I would say then take that and compare that to the results you're getting in your life. And are they royal results? And if they're not, then you know that you still need to integrate that self-image deep down in your spirit. And one way of doing it is some of the tools that I'm gonna teach you today. So you cannot doubt. You just, there's just no room for doubt. You catch yourself doubting and you need to shift your physicality so here's a great way to because when you shift your physicality you shift your energy and sometimes you know even though i'm teaching this though there's still a world around me that can can influence me so what i do uh is i get up and i move my body so if i'm sitting at my computer or if i'm doing something and i start to doubt something then I shift my body. Because when you move your body spatially, then you actually shift your perception of reality. And perception turns out to be reality. So when you shift your perception, the world reflects something different back to you. So it's a really powerful tool. So yeah, that's really great. Thank you for sharing that, Austin. Most importantly, stop looking at the past, you know, this will kill you every time. It's, it's like, well, I remember when this recession thing happened before, and this is what took me down and okay, take the blessing from that and then leave the rest and stop thinking about it. You only have like, just, you can only entertain those negative thoughts a few times. And then for a few seconds, and then you got to let it go. And so I actually um, interviewed someone yesterday on my podcast, The Deborah Peters Show, 
that's uh, a Wall Street guy, 30 year Wall Street guy. You might want to um, check out the Deborah Peters show on all major platforms, podcast platforms, Spotify, Rumble, iTunes, Amazon Music, SoundCloud, uh, and catch the Tom Samuelson um, podcast episode because we really dig into um, what's happening in the markets, the real estate industry. There's some good stuff in there. And take the good stuff and leave the rest and use it to your advantage. And just know that everything's always changing. So don't get stuck in it, right? Um, Susan says, I can encourage and help people with their self-image. When it comes to myself, I fall short. Yeah, that's common. You know, I used to do that. When I first started coaching, I was making people millions of dollars. <coughs> Pardon me. And I wasn't doing it for myself. So you have the tools. It's working for them. Turn it on yourself. It just means setting time aside each day, making yourself valuable enough to set time aside each day to work on you and making that a priority before you jump into business. Please don't leave it as, um, well, if I get around to it, I'll do it because I've got all this stuff pulling on me. It should be the first thing you do every morning and the last thing you do every night. And if you can, uh, at lunchtime, you know, when you pop into the bathroom, just uh, look in the mirror and do some conversation with yourself. Really important, stop talking, defeat. It's, um, man, you know, when people are sitting around commiserating and talking negative, I leave. You know, I love you guys. <laughs> love you. Love you. But I, but I, but I got to go, you know, um, and just move on because it gets into you and then you become it. And what you become internally becomes physically on the external. So definitely uh, this is from Evangeline. I've had a major setbacks with my health, which has been a mission to overcome, limiting beliefs about making money, definitely needing to shift my health and generating wealth. When I feel good, I'm in a positive spirit, some positive thinking, awesome things happen. Yeah, so you nailed it. When I feel good. Here's the thing, guys. You have to care enough about how you feel. Because our feelings will tell us when we're off track. When you don't feel good, it is an indication that your thoughts are negative and it's time to make a shift. Move your body, do a meditation, go for a walk. I walk twice a day. I go early in the morning and I go late in the afternoon before the sun sets. I want to get the sun's rays, the very healing, the near red, the infrared. And I use it as an opportunity to appreciate my surroundings, even if I don't like them, <laughs> appreciate something about them, appreciate the sky, the birds, something. And that will shift your energy. And when you shift your energy, your body will heal. Because the only thing that's keeping your body from healing is your energy is negative. So this is a process. It's a, it's a doesn't happen overnight, it takes commitment. That's why I asked you in the beginning of the webinar if you were committed. So eliminate all fear and doubt from your thoughts. Just don't be willing to feel bad. I think what's happening with most people is they've become conditioned to tolerate sadness, to tolerate depression, to tolerate low energy, to tolerate anger, to tolerate fear. Man. We have been conditioned by the media to tolerate mass, mass, mass amounts of fear and just don't be willing to tolerate it anymore. Just don't watch it. Shut it off and choose to feel good instead. Maybe you need to put on some music once or twice a day and jump around your office or your living room or your home office or where you're working from and just get happy. It takes, you know, discipline. It's like building a muscle. I go to the gym four days a week. That's how I stay fit. If I didn't go four days a week, I wouldn't be fit. Yeah, it's a choice. Do you want a fit body? Then you got to go to the gym. Do you want a, a lean body? Then you, then you need to clean up your diet and get the sugar out of it, get the alcohol out of it, get the, get the, the vegetable fats, which are toxic out of your diet. And don't eat so many meals in a day. Cut it down. Do some intermittent fasting. Get on a good, healthy keto plan. I just dropped 30 pounds. Boom. Healthy keto, intermittent fasting, gone. 
inflammation's gone out of my body, <laughs> brain fog is gone. Yeah, but it's hard because there's all this other stuff around us and you have to decide, you're making that decision every moment. Maybe every second you're saying, I choose to be healthy instead of I'm gonna, I like the way this chocolate bar tastes. Instead, you, I choose to be lean, I choose to be prosperous. All of this is a choice, all of it. Thank you, Alma, thank you. So the repetition, this is where repetition comes in. A new habit, a new program, a new pattern of thinking, of feeling, of vibrating is, comes from repetition. You have a whole lifetime of bandwidth of suffering probably generations of it, you know? And so you might be that pioneer in the family that is repatterning and reprogramming yourself for future generations. Make it stop with you. Don't be the old paradigm of your family. Unless, of course, they were, they were crushing it. Then look at how they thought, not what, how they thought, and utilize that model it model what works ignore ignore what doesn't work because a belief is just a thought you think over and over and over a belief laced with fear and doubt is a limiting belief for any of you that are wondering what's a limiting belief how do i know that i have them are, are you afraid then you have them are you afraid of the market are you afraid of a recession are you afraid that you're going to lose your money then you have limiting beliefs it's just the long and the short of it. And you have negative emotions too, because that's a, that's a negative emotion. So what's running you, what's running your vibration, which is running your results, is your limiting beliefs and your negative emotions, not your goals and your dreams and your ideas. It's the negative stuff that's running you. And so we got to clean house, right? And put in a new pattern. Limiting beliefs create energy blocks that cause resistance to success. And then the excuses come up. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. It's not in the budget. It's like, well, then you're not suffering enough. Because if you don't change the inner pattern, the outer efforting is not going to get you where you want to go. And there's only 24 hours in a day, you need to sleep, you need to eat, you need to spend time with your family, you need to work on your business, you need to work in your business, you got to get the mindset training that is going to give you the tools, to not just shift once, but keep shifting. So remember, it's only 40% of you that you're utilizing. Resistance is a lack of belief. I have found this to be so true, is that what are you believing in? Are you believing in the hardship? Are you believing in the fear and the doubt, what the media tells you? Or are you just ignoring all of your senses and going for it anyway? Even if you don't think you have the money, the money will be there. See, here's the deal. When you make a decision to do something, the money shows up. If the money doesn't show up, you really weren't committed. Because energetically, everything comes from the inside out. It's not the other way around. Any of you that are feeling overwhelmed, who's got some overwhelm going on? I had a lady tell me the other day, I, I can't come to the leadership retreat because then I might be overwhelmed. And I'm like, <laughs> girl, you're already overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed with resistance. You're overwhelmed with procrastination. You're overwhelmed with fear. No. Nah. That's just the ego playing tricks on you, telling you, sabotaging you. Overwhelm is when your beliefs negate your desires. Those pesky limiting beliefs are telling you that what you want, what you desire, what you set for goals is not possible. So it's just you, baby doll. It's just you. It's just you blocking you. And so, yeah, Helen, me, that's God, that's good. And Alma, always, yeah, right? Get out of your own way. All with all is within, all. Your results are your energy projected outwardly into physical manifestation. 
I can tell you this, and I know you can feel it, but unless you accept it, you will always look outside of yourself for a different result, and it will elude you. You'll chase it all your life. I promise you that. I've coached over 10,000 people in 19 countries over the last 25 years. I have some practice at this. I know what works and what doesn't work. So six mindset hacks. Can we go a few minutes over? Everybody okay with that? Um, I am. So I always well, allocate a little extra time. So at least space my day for things. Almost like, yes. All right. Well, you know what? Those that want it will stay. Those that think they need to go do busy work will leave. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you. So here's the mindset hacks. This is what, this is what you can do immediately. Start applying this. Start living this. Number one, create a new pattern of thinking. How do you do that? You focus only on end goals. So write them down. I have mine on cue cards, like little small recipe cards I just picked up at the grocery store. And um, I, I have them sitting in my bathroom. So in the morning, when I'm brushing my teeth and washing my face and putting on my makeup, I'm reading through them. And when I do it, I'm focused on looking into my own eyes. It's like I'm having a direct conversation with God, like, hello. I know you're in there. You're guiding my life. This is it. Let's get this done. Let's do this, baby. We're you and me. We're co-creators. So I only focus on end goals. I ignore the how. I've got some big stuff written down. So big in my current situation. I don't see the how. But I don't care. I don't need to see the how. There's a reason God planted those ideas, those sparks of desire in me. So I'm just trusting that. And I'm letting my unconscious mind sort it out for me. So I don't know how some of the things I'm asking for are gonna happen, but I can tell you that it works. And here's why I had written down some time ago that I wanted to be a number one international best-selling author. And I had created a book proposal that I shopped around and got the door slammed in my face so many times I lost count. And then just randomly, I get this email from this woman back in December and I thought, well, I'm really curious about your work. And so I emailed her back and I jumped on a meeting with her and I sent her my book proposal. And she's like, oh my God, I love this. In fact, this is so good. There's stuff in here that could be a movie. Just this one, this one page of what you've written could be a whole movie. So now I have a publishing deal and not for one book, for two and a chapter in a collaborative book. So I call it my 2.1 2 .1 publishing deal. So it happens, it works. And it, you just get out of the way. And you're right, Helen, the how is not our work. You wanna reverse engineer your end goals into four steps. Because many times, thank you, thank you so much for that, Helen, I appreciate it. It's big for me, like this is, um, when I was in grade seven, I went to my English teacher and asked him if he'd help me, if he'd coach me to write a book. And I didn't do it, um, but I am now. So here we are. So the thing is, is you wanna reverse engineer your end goals into four blocks because the problem most people have is they have these big goals, but they hesitate to take a step because the thing is, is if you knew the first step, you'd already be doing it. So the way the unconscious mind works is it reverse engineers, it thrives off of reverse engineering. So you want to put the end goal, the last step, and then 
three, two, one is where you are now. So end goal, last step, four, uh, three, two, one, and where you are now. <clears throat> That'll give your, your manifesting machine called the subconscious, unconscious universe, the, um, the awareness to chunk it down and it'll get you started. Then it'll start sending you insights as to what to do next, the inspired action. Like Travis said, he just like, couldn't wait to get up, you know? And um, this is the key. Then, then identify the feeling of the result manifested. So when I'm in front of the mirror and I'm reviewing these big goals and I'm talking into my eyes, I am in a feeling. I'm living it. It's like a virtual reality experience for me. And then, let me find my clicker. You want to practice this feeling two to three times a day in the mirror. So yeah, yeah, you got to carve out time to do this. You do, or nothing's going to change. And the sooner you embrace this, and actually start applying it to your life, the sooner you can get newer, bigger, better results without having to grind it out. You speak it out loud. I am now. I am is the name of God. I am now. Whatever comes after the I am is what you become. I am smart. I am worthy. I am talented. I am successful. I am blessed. I am powerful. I am an achiever. I am whatever, fit, healthy, strong, well, loved. <laughs> you name it, baby doll, it's there, all right? And then you have to ignore your sensory acuity. So you gotta shut off the TV, you shut off the negativity and just become like, for me, I am like that. It's like, you doubt, get out of my way. Come back and visit me when you get your priority straight. And the straight priority is, I am a child of the most high God. And what I am creating is God's expression through me. And with that co-creation, you can't go wrong. You just can't go wrong. Constancy, intensity power, belief, the more dialed in you are, the more this will become an obsession. And it's that obsessed energy that produces the results. You want to practice pulling energy toward you. That is really the key. When you practice pulling energy toward you, instead of pushing, most people, if you've ever been into a, a retail store, you know, where the second you come through the door, they're like pouncing on you and you're like, whoa, like you just want to get out the door. You don't want that energy coming off of you. You want to pull energy toward you. And when you pull energy toward you, you're pulling in support and guidance from all the powers that be, basically. So I have something for you. And it's a free energy pull video for manifesting, showing you how to shift your beliefs, how to get into flow, how to increase your results. And I'm gonna go and get that link for you while we open it up for questions. Um, so I'm gonna stop my share and we'll just open it up for questions. Here's a great example. um oh so helen wants me to give her an example absolutely i'm going to give you the link and you can just play with it you can have it it's my gift to you so travis talk to us about some of your time learning to pull on pull energy toward you uh it's funny you mentioned that because i actually had a conversation with um 
um, our training director for our loan division and um, just talking about, you know, how are we going to find people and things like that? And it, for me, um, I just expect that they're going to come into my life. So um, now I usually look from within, you know, when I'm looking for certain positions within the company and stuff like that. But I also find that um, I just expect somebody to show up that I'm needing to fill a certain position or aspect of my life. And that's something that <clears throat> it just comes naturally. I don't, I don't know because I don't like to go and seek these people and, you know, put a job offer out on Indeed or anything like that. I just know that the right person is going to show up and it just kind of happens and it sounds kind of kooky or whatever, but that's just how this continues to grow in my business is the correct people just keep showing up because I expect that they're going to show up and, yeah. and it's up to me to recognize that this is the correct person that came in. They may not be saying, Hey, I want to do this in your job, in your organization, but I'm recognizing that they had a certain talent and that that would fill in this gap that I've had. And so that's when I start a conversation and things kind of progress from there. So it starts with a belief, right? Belief or kind of, I expect it to happen. So it's an expectation. It's an expectation that I know that the right person is going to come in to fill this position if I'm trying to grow a certain division of the company or something like that. It just shows up. Yeah. It does. And so that comes back to that first slide when I said it's about knowing. Because when you expect it, you know it. Yeah. And, and that's where the rubber meets the road. See, I've never really been um, caught up in goal setting. I mean, I pick a handful every year and they all come to fruition. They're big, they're big brush strokes. They're not, you know, me micromanaging them with my ego that it's this, 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 and this, and here's the how, and this is where it has to come from, and this is the person that has to give it to me. I don't do that. I used to in the beginning. There was this um, smart goal thing that um, was all about you know, specificity, et cetera, et cetera. And um, sometimes being too specific, like blocks out the possibility because then our ego is trying to micromanage what God can do for us. And, you know, God and, and our, our unconscious mind really are buddies. Like there's a direct communication that takes place that when we truly believe that we are amazing we're a child of god and that we've come to this planet for a reason and the reason isn't to fix anybody it's not to fix the world it's not to change anybody it's to fully it's to live in the full expression of who we are and the gifts that were seeded into our heart when we came here so that's everything. And all the rest is efforting. Of course, you have to have clarity of mind. And when you're inspired to take steps, you need to take the steps, of course. So you're still going to work. You're still going to put through energy. You're still going to, you know, like be in front of your computer or on the phone or in front of people for some time. Some, maybe some long time, maybe some long hours, but it's not going to be because you're struggling and to eke out a living. It's because you expect to win. That's the key. You have to expect to win. And if you don't, you've got some limiting beliefs that need to be repatterned. And that's why I sent you guys. Did everybody get that? I put in the long form energy pull link. And then I put in the short form. Did everybody get that? 
Let me know you got that. It's in the chat if you're looking for it. Yeah, it's in the chat. And grab that, sign up, and when you get the thank me, oh, Evangeline didn't get it, okay? Uh, can you check that? They're saying they don't see it in the chat. To host? Oh, it got sent to host and panelists. Oh, can you repopulate that? Let's see. Oh, let's see. Everyone, there we go. I'm so glad I asked that question. You guys must have been wondering why I haven't sent it. I just resent it to everyone. I sent you the short form. And. All right, looks like we can see it now. Good. I'm going to send you the long form too, just in case, because links break. There. Oh, I sent you the same one. Uh, it just keeps pulling up the short form. Uh, do me a favor, somebody and test it, make sure you can get into it so that I know. Go ahead and just like yeah. click on it, fill it out, and let me know that it's working. Because I sent one out via email uh, campaign earlier yesterday, and um, and it wasn't working. Ah, brilliant. It worked. Okay, cool. Questions? Let's take a couple minutes. I won't keep you long. Just uh, ask me anything. Let's do this. It's 2023. It's a new beginning. It's a new opportunity to move your life forward. I've been doing this for over 20 years. How can I help you? Ask me a question. All right, that's definitely working. No questions yet. Takes a minute, doesn't it? Well, while we're waiting for people to type in the chat, I do want to thank you for coming in. Um, yeah. It's always exciting when you when you come and it kind of lets me know, you know, especially on the team, who's actually super committed to, even if they have doubts in this type of mindset, just showing up to the any any type of mindset webinar or something that could better your business, I think is uh, really lot. shows me who's serious. Um, and um, I like working with those agents on my team. We have quite a few of them now. And um, I can tell when we have these conversations, you know, who's really serious and um, who takes bits and pieces of some of the stuff we talk about on our Monday webinars um, seriously, because I see, you know, from the outside in as a broker watching someone's business grow is really cool for one thing, but also um, I can give them feedback because sometimes I think they think it's moving slowly, but I can really see the, the progression. So um, I can see yeah. when they're putting this type of mindset to work. Of course you can, because those that aren't are, are still getting the same results, right? Yeah. Um, so a couple questions. So uh, what's the first and changing mindset, for example, with my health? I'm ready for a major shift. Um, so first of all, it's a decision. I can tell you, um, I'm not going to go into details because I haven't announced this to the world yet, but um, I just healed myself from a major health challenge this year. And um, I decided not to work with uh, physicians because they wanted to do things to my body, <laughs> like surgeries and, and drugs that I just don't subscribe to. It's not part of my belief system. And so I had to make a decision um, what I what to do. And the first step was I needed to make a decision if I was going to live or if I was going to let myself die. That's the first decision. And so I decided to live. And then I needed to make a decision as to how open I was to finding the right information for me and trusting my gut what was good for me and what wasn't good for me. And um, that was a journey. I had to like really do some digging. The first thing I did 
is I made a lifestyle change. So when you say, how do I get my health on track? The first thing you need to do is make a lifestyle change. You got to change your thinking. You got to change how you talk to yourself. You got to change how much negative emotion you allow to occupy your thoughts and your day and your life. And then you need to change what you eat, how often you eat. And um, if you don't do that, you don't have a base because everything we consume affects the vibration of our cellular structure from negative emotions to sugar. And sugar is probably the number one killer on the planet. Um, so you have to be willing to really make a radical change. And if you're not, then you're kind of like going to be getting the same result, you know? So that's, that's, first and foremost. And um, if you use the energy poll, if you, if you fill out that form and you use the energy poll, I cover some of this in there. It'll, when you change your um, energy, you change your vibration. And when you change your vibration, you change your body's ability to regenerate itself. And that in and of itself changes the foods you crave. It changes the quality of your sleep. It changes what you're willing to tolerate in terms of what you watch on television, the conversations you have. I mean, an energetic change at a cellular level changes your life and that will change your health because you, your body is designed by God to regenerate itself. That's why bones heal and, and cuts heal and bruises heal and your mind heals and all of your organs have the ability to heal. All of your systems have the ability to heal but you can't continue to run the same paradigm and the same patterning and the same habits that you currently are and expect your health to turn around because you're dragging your body down and you're putting it into a deficit. So I hope that answers your question. Um, Pam says, how do I define creativity as an area of my life? You're welcome, Evangeline. Um, well, I, I think that, I think that, how we live our lives is creative in that when we have a desire to do something, when we get an idea, man, what, what's more creative than an idea? You know, if you have a business idea or you have an idea to like travel somewhere, it, it's the, it's, um, it's in the unobvious stuff that the growth happens. So for instance, um, in the spring of this year, 12, 2022, in, in the early spring of this year, I had uh, trouble renegotiating the lease that I was in in Newport Beach. And so I went out hiking and I asked for guidance. And when I was on that hike, I got a very distinct message, you need to move. And I had lived in California pretty much all my career. So um, I'm like, okay, like where? And the message I got was you just need to like go re remote work for a few months and let it come to you because you don't have all the answers yet. And so I did. I spent the summer, I drove to Tennessee and I spent the summer remote working around the South. And um, then I got this message, you know, you need to go to Savannah. And I'm like, well, what's in Savannah? And the message was, you'll know when I tell you to go. And so I was waiting for a sign. You know, I was in, I went to Nashville for a while. I was in Chattanooga for a while. I was in Kentucky for a while. I was moving around, working remotely. Uh, my business was thriving. And um, then my birthday came at the end of July and I got this message driving back from Nashville to Chattanooga. All right, it's time to go to Savannah. And I'm like, wow. So I've been bi-coastal since um, early August. I've been in Savannah and Newport. I'm I fly back and forth. And that level of trust that I have cultivated has paid in spades. My health challenge is gone. I healed myself. Um, and my, I redid my entire business model. I've expanded my team. I've found and, and am onboarding a 
a remote sales team of appointment setters and closers. Like I can, you know, and I, I got a book deal. I got a book deal for two books and a chapter in a collaborative book. I've already had speaking gigs in Atlanta. I mean, stuff is popping. And it's just from applying the tools that um, I've given you here today. And I gave you my best today. I hope, I hope that you know that. Like I didn't hold anything back. You know, I didn't like, oh, I'm only gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, there's some seminar leaders that'll just give you a little bit and then they won't give you the rest. And it's like, I don't believe in that. I believe that I'm gonna give it all to you. And if you want more, you'll come and work with me. And I'm gonna put a link here for my uh, leadership and management retreat. I've got one coming up in Savannah. I've got three coming up in Savannah if you're on the East Coast. And I've got three coming up in Newport Beach, one on the 26th of January. So these are small groups, um, 15 people, and it's a deep dive into helping you shift. So when you walk out the door, you're not holding yourself back anymore. So. And I, I can vouch for that. So one, one thing I noticed with Deborah is she doesn't let you off the hook with uh, whatever kind of answer when when she goes, when she asks a question, you know, you give an answer and she will start to worm down into your brain and really make you be honest with yourself with that answer and make you uh, inspire you basically to reframe that and see why you're in the current state of mind you're in right now. So um, it's kind of fun to watch because um, I've been to several and you did it to me. And then it's fun to watch you do it to the others, especially when I bring them. So, cause I'm like, yeah. oh, I know where they're going with this. So. Yeah, cause, cause the thing is, is that the reason I, I'm so persistent in walking you through to the end is what is then it's, it's not theory, it's not words, it's an experience. Cause when I take you to the end, you get into the feeling within yourself and you walk out the door with that feeling and you have to have that feeling in order to continue because it's a transferable skill set that you can use in every area of your life for the rest of your life it's in your hip pocket and so if i don't take you to that feeling then you just have a bunch of words you just have a day of listening to me talk but when i give you the exercises to do and i get you into the feeling now you own it yeah you own the new you and that's something I, I I take into my business a lot of what I've learned over the the, co the the personal coaching and then the sessions as well. You know, I incorporate that a lot into my meetings and things like that. And so, um, if anybody's on, you know, the the webinar today and you're wondering where I get this stuff, it's a lot of it's from Deb. I incorporate that myself into my business and. You know, that's why we're at where we are right now. I mean, where we're at today and where we were a year and a half ago or night and day. So that's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, I just I see this message from uh, Larissa. I totally need to hear this today. I'm on a similar journey with my health. I no longer trust doctors and have changed my lifestyle. Good for you, girl. But, you know, here's the deal. It's like doctors do have a place. So don't you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like I had a I had a hard talk with my doctor and I said, you have to come, you have to suspend some of your traditional training and come to my side if we're going to continue to work together. And he conceded. So we're still working together. It's just I'm driving that bus, not not his um, his belief system. And I want to acknowledge somebody. So Pam Webster, thank you for that beautiful message, Pam. Pam Webster is a rock star. And she is um, someone that I just deeply respect and admire she i met her when i was speaking at a a law conference on this very subject a law conference and it was it was lawyers and cpas so it doesn't get any more logical and linear minded than that and pam had flown into santa monica from anguilla and we connected and then um she came and she flew back to la for one of my um, business accelerator boot camps, and we did some work together. I she flew me to Anguilla, 
and I did a strategy session with her and her team. So she invested a significant amount of money. And the purpose for all of this work was for her to win the, the political race of being the first woman leader of the opposition in Anguilla. And we did it. She just knocked it out of the park and became the first leader of the, op the first woman. Can you believe that? It's like at the time, I think it was 2019, 18 or 17 or something. The first woman in history to lead the opposition party in Anguilla. And she did it. And she did an amazing, amazing job. So thank you so much for being here today. And God bless you, Pam. It's great to work with you. And I really appreciate you. So I wanted to just like, yeah, bring her, profile her. Nice. That's awesome. And you too, Travis. You too. You've, you've been crushing it. I'm so proud of you. You know, I Thanks. remember having to sort of like wrangle you a little bit to come to the first boot camp, but you made it happen. And now look at you. Look at this yeah. beautiful team you have. This is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I appreciate all the uh, the time you've you've given me, and you know the information, helping me fine tune my mindset. You know, I'm I'm constantly working on that. I have struggles all the time too. We all do. You Keep know. Going. So, but I this year, you know, I am focused on my health more, and um, not just maintaining, but improving. So um, I'm really trying to pay attention um, to not use the word try like I just did and do. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm working on big strides in, in improvement on my health and getting fitter, my, my, um, my diet. So um, that's, um, that was, if you call it a new year's resolution, and then really paying attention to the words that come out of my mouth and what I'm telling myself. Because a lot of times I feel like I am going through emotions, um, but not a, not really like diving down into, you know, the feeling of things. So yeah, um, go deeper. Fine tuning year for me. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. And uh, make sure you guys get, jump on that link and grab that energy poll. I would like to hear from you after you play with it for a while. And uh, if you're interested, I've got a couple seats still available in the Leadership and Management Retreat in Newport Beach on the 26th of January. And then um, as the new website comes out, the new sales team jumps on, we're raising the price of that. So it'll be a significant jump. So you want to grab this one at last year's prices. So thank you, everyone. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you very much for coming on. My pleasure. Have a blessed day, everybody. Have a great day.